Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy and I'm so happy you're here. Today we're doing some Dollar Tree DIYs for Christmas and if you're not already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you like these projects, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. And now without further ado, let's get started. Oh, my hair's crunchy. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm using a 12 pack of these wiping cloths and they're just basically rags and I really like the color of them. So there's a grain that goes with fabric as you know and so if you pull it one way, you'll see one way is tighter than the other. So I'm just gonna cut off the edge of the bottom and the top and then I'm gonna make a slit right in the middle and then cut two sides. So I'm having four pieces if that makes sense. And I'm just gonna rip those down all the way until I get four semi-equal strips. And then I took these tinsel trees and instead of just using one, I'm gonna put three on top of each other just to make it a little bit higher and more of a statement piece. And I'm not gluing them or tying them together because then I'm gonna take these wired lights and I'm gonna feed that through the very bottom and now my battery pack will sit right underneath where it's hollow. And then I'm just gonna wrap that around my tree. So I took two of the strips and glued those together in the middle and then I'm gonna take that seam and put that on the back of my tree I left all the tinsel on so that it would be a little bit fuller and kind of puff the fabric out so you couldn't see the bars of that grid or the form of the tree. And then I'm just gonna start tying knots in the front and then I'm gonna start staggering them so that they kind of go in a little wavy, I don't know, line towards the side. And then I'm just gonna layer those on top of each other so they're overlapping and none of the tinsel comes through. If any does poke through, I'm just gonna cut that off or tuck it in with my fingernail because where you tie it, it's a little skinnier, and so you'll have to pull the fabric over. If you do have some areas that do poke through, I just took a scrap piece of that rag and tucked it in between the two rows, if that makes sense. And then once I get them all knotted and my tree completely covered, I was gonna use this star, which it really is cute, but I decided to go a different way. So I took the bottom holder of the star and I just wrapped that around with my rags and tied that in the knot and then it stayed secure on the top of my tree. Now I know this is looking like a hot mess and some of you are doubting me <laughs> right now, but I promise it looks so pretty when we're all done with it and I've covered all the tinsel and gotten everything in place. And once I cut down those sides. So then I cut down all of my knots and made them about the same size, pretty small, but just a little bit so it looked like sweet little bows all along the side of my tree. And then once I get those all cut down and all of my tinsel pushed in and tucked in and taken care of and covered up those spots where they were showing, I just took some of those extra strips and I'm gonna make sweet little roses by starting it off with twirling it at the end and then adding some hot glue to keep it in place. And then with the excess, I'm just gonna twist it either for, tor <laughs> I'm gonna twist it either toward me or away from me and then glue that down. I think you just have to look at what I'm doing because that's really hard to explain. So once I get three of them and I made different sizes, I'm just gonna glue those to the side of my tree. And then I took this fuzzy little owl. I got this at Hobby Lobby, I don't know, like three years ago or something. I decided to switch out the star because the tree itself was going in more of a kind of shabby chic looking direction. 
So I thought the owl was more appropriate. So I just tucked him into that holder that was already attached to the top of my tree. And then I took those pieces that we cut off at the very beginning when we were making our strips. And I'm gonna make a perky bow just by folding them over and then tying them together. And then I decided to go a step further by adding some of these Dollar Tree pom-poms. And I'm just gonna glue it at the front of my little rouging or whatever this is, the knots, and then glue it in place, wrap it around, stop where that rouging is or those knots are, and and then glue that down and then cut off the excess and then start on the other side. And then to add a little more Christmas cuteness, I'm just gonna take the tips of some of these frosty little greenery pieces from the Dollar Tree and glue those in around my roses. And then I found this adorable little hope sign and I thought this was so perfect and pretty to go right in front of my tree and it's done. And here it is all finished and I love this so much. I know the owls that Dollar Tree carries are, I don't know, they're just, there's something wrong with them, <laughs> but I think you could make them over and get them really cute. They also have some really furry, fuzzy, round, uh, really owl-shaped ornaments that would be pretty, and you could add eyes and a little beak somehow. But I love how this turned out, and I hope you guys like it too. So I saw this adorable little ornament at Ross's Dress for Less, and I know some of you don't have that store, but I thought I could make this on my own using these dice from the Dollar Tree because it was about the same size, and the original I think would probably be, I didn't see the price tag, but I'm guessing because I am a Ross connoisseur, it was probably $7.99, $8.99, I don't know, somewhere around there, but I thought I could make it for a buck and some change. So I took my dice and I put them on a skewer and I used some acrylic, red paint to paint them. Only problem with this is that it took about 70 11 coats to get it to completely cover up those dots of the dice. So I don't know if it would have been different if I would have spray painted them, if that would have made it easier, or if I still would have had to have done the same amount of coats or what, but it was raining that day, so I couldn't do it anyway. So I'm gonna take my big fat nail, and you guys know I use this big fat nail for so many things, and so I recommend you get a big fat nail, seriously. <laughs> So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna punch it through the middle of each of my dice and then I took some white string from the Dollar Tree and then using a big needle, it's the cousin of my big fat nail, <laughs> I'm just gonna poke those right into the middle of my dice. And then I cut out the letters J-O-Y in my white adhesive vinyl and I'm just gonna pull off the outside part of the vinyl and then weed the O. This took me like five minutes. It was so easy because I was also doing an Etsy order. So I got to put this one onto that same piece and cut, cut it out real quick. And so that was super easy. But you could also use your white paint pen and just do it by hand because it's just the three letters. And I'm using my Frisco Craft transfer tape. And so I'm just gonna pull that off and put it onto the front of my dice. Then I threaded on some beads and I put it in a pattern that I thought was pretty. And here's where I kind of got myself in a pickle. I left my needle on my thread and I should have fed it back through the beads and the dice, but it was stuck there and I probably could have figured it out, but I just cut it off and tied a knot up there at the top. And then I fed some more beads on at the bottom. Now this thread though, it's not th the string, it's got like a wax coating on it. So when I made my knots, they didn't stay very well, but I'll address that in just a second. Now I'm gonna make a tassel by wrapping it around my four fingers about, I don't know, 25 times, just until you get it to the size that you want. And then take another piece, and I poked it through, but I'm gonna, 
I'm the worst tassel maker, you guys. I just, I'm no good at it. And I even had a sweet viewer send me instructions that she wrote out with a little diagram and everything about two years ago. And I still haven't learned or taken the time to figure it out because I just don't use them as often as... <laughs> I guess, you know, I need to do my homework. But anyway, you see what I'm doing, and I'm wrapping it around the middle so that it's got that little piece about a third of the way down. And then I took the bottom of the string that was left over after I put my beads on at the bottom, and that's what I'm going to use to tie on my tassel. Just made a knot, and then I'll cut that off or tuck it in. I don't even remember what I did. And then I cut the bottom loops all apart, and then I'm going to grab them with my hand and give it a straight across haircut. And to keep those knots all secure so they don't slip off, I used my lighter and I'm just going to singe everything or melt it or I don't know what it did, but it kept it all in place and it's done. And here it is. And I love this so much. It's not exactly like the one from Ross's, but it's going perfectly with the red and white theme that I'm doing this year for our Christmas decor. So I love it and I hope you like it too. For our next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm using my assistant Cadence to help me with this advent wreath, and actually I was her assistant, but we're using four of the Dollar Tree white candles, three bottles of purple nail polish, two bottles of silver nail polish, and one bottle of pink nail polish. And then we're going to be using some toothpicks, a plastic box that we wrapped with a Dollar Tree bag, and then something like a rag or a big towel in this case, and then a piece of cardboard to put our pieces so that they can dry. So the first thing she did was added water to our little bin, and then once that's pretty much full, we wanna get it as far to the top as we can without it going over, and then she's gonna set that back onto our towel and then unwrap the candles by pulling that cellophane off. Then she's going to mix up the nail polish and she's using the purple one first and she's just going to pour that bottle into the water and just kind of go in a zigzag motion and circles and whatever design she wants. And then once she's done with the purple, she's going to use half of the silver. So she shakes it up again and then she's going to pour that onto that purple. So she'll have a marbling effect with both the purple and the silver because we're doing an advent wreath. And again, we're just giving you another option to do. And this is really fun to do with the kids. Then she took the toothpick and she just pulled it across her nail polish and made little wispies here and there just to get it all mixed in in a pretty design. And then she took her candle holder and dipped it into the water just on the surface and then turned it until it stopped adhering to the glass. Because once the glass gets wet, the nail polish will not pull up onto it. And then after she was done with that one, she took a toothpick and then pulled out all of the ickies from the water and put it on the cardboard. And we did that with three of our candles. Now, one of them she didn't really like, so we had to redo that one and she wanted to try it again. So luckily I have a lot of these candles <laughs> in my stash. So we were able to do one redo. So once she was getting the hang of it though, these are so stinking pretty and I can't wait for you guys to see what they look like when they're done. Again, you might not be fully confident in how these turn out, but <laughs> they're so pretty. So now she's gonna do the pink one because this is the third week of Advent which is Godette Sunday. And so that's always the rose colored or pink colored candle. So she just did the same thing with the pink and the gray. And then she's turning some of them over because she wanted it to kind of drip down. And I just, well, wait till you see them when they're all completely dry. <laughs> she's so stinking cute. So now we have them and they're completely dry. And then I just took some acetone to get the little serial numbers off at the top. And then any of the excess nail polish that got stuck at the top or wherever anywhere you don't want it you can just take it off with the acetone so now i'm taking my black paint pen and where she dipped it there's kind of like a natural line that happened from the dipping process and i'm just going to write those four weeks of advent so we're starting with the first week which is hope and i know you guys have heard me say this in every video now first one is hope second one is faith or love you can do either one and then the third week which is joy we're gonna put that one on there 
because that means it's almost here. We're almost here and the Savior's almost born. And then the fourth week is peace. And then we just put them onto a silver oval tray from the Dollar Tree and here's how they turned out. I absolutely love this. I think it is better than I even imagined it was gonna turn out, but I love it, she loves it, and we hope you like it too. For our next project, I'm using this All Hearts Come Home for Christmas sign and I'm taking off the wreath with my Cricut spatula. I'll set that aside because you probably know I'll use that. And then I pulled off the twine that was on the back. I was gonna take out the staples, but then quickly realized that that was what was holding the front part of that roof on there because it's a separate piece of wood. Anyway, so I took my spatula again and got the paper off of the front of my sign and I'm going to be painting over it. I used my craft knife to cut along the roof line so that I could pull the paper off and have a clean cut right there so it wasn't ripped or anything. And then I didn't want the chimney so I'm going to take my craft knife again and just cut along that. A few swipes is all it took and then it just broke right off. So I have a sweet friend, Bryn, who found this ornament and she loved the painting on it and wanted me to try and replicate it. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do a perfect job, but we're gonna use the inspiration and make a pretty little manger scene. So I just took my pencil and did a rough outline to kind of give the idea of Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus in a manger. And then I just took some French linen chalk paint and some white chalk paint, mixed those together to make a really pretty subtle off-whitish color and then started painting around where my pencil marks were. You could paint the whole background first and then pencil in your outline, but I wanted some of that brown peeking through a little bit. So I'm just gonna outline that and then I'm gonna go back in and make it a little bit darker by adding more of that French linen into the white to make the drape of Joseph and then make it a little bit lighter by adding some more white and just using all kinds of different shades of beige or off-white. So it's very subtle and all monochromatic, but at the same time, you can see the difference of what is his head covering and then his gown and then Mary's gown. And then for Mary's headpiece, I wanted a teeny tiny bit of blue. So I took my crystal blue and added a lot of white and a little bit of that French linen to get a super soft, soft blue and made her head wrapping with that. And then I filled in the faces with another shade. I made the manger a little bit darker and then filled in Jesus's head. I was gonna leave it the way it was with no gold because I loved it so much, but I didn't have a star that I could attach to the top because I would have done that and left off the gold. But in keeping with the original ornament, I went ahead and added the gold. And so I'm just gonna make a star at the top. I really wasn't happy with my star and I didn't like the shape of it. And the lines were not straight. I, I knew they didn't need to be perfect but they were all over the place but <laughs> I end up fixing him in just a second and so I went ahead and added some like kind of thick lines on the headdress and everywhere where it had it on the original ornament but I'm going to go back and make those a little bit thinner and now I'm glad I added the gold but either way would have been super pretty I think. So I think the easiest way to fix any kind of mistake, whether you think it's a mistake or not, is to just go back and kind of rustic-y it up with your background color. So that's what I did with the gold and the star. And then I took some scrap pieces of my Christmas greenery from Dollar Tree and glued those to the top part of my roof. And then I used this pretty off-white and gold ribbon from the Dollar Tree and just made a sweet little bow. And then I'm gonna glue that right to the top. Now I always kind of wait until the last minute to cut my tails of my bows until I know if I can feed them through the greenery or if it's just gonna stick out and look weird. So I just cut those down so that they just went from side to side. 
and then I took a couple of mini pine cones and glued those to the bottom and then I'm taking the backing of a frame that I used in another project and you know I kept it <laughs> I have a drawer of these so I'm gonna glue that to the back of my house and then to light it up at night because I think Christmas is just the best time you can put lights on anything and you'll never be called gaudy <laughs> so I just took some wired lighting and used some masking tape to attach that to the very outside edge of my house And then I wanted to make a sign that would stand next to it because I didn't want to write the words on my sign. So when we were cleaning out my aunt and uncle's house a while back, I found this Scrabble game and I had never opened it up, but I knew I was going to use the tiles in some way. Actually, every single piece is in here, so I decided not to glue this down, but we found some beautiful treasures in here. There was a score pad where it showed my aunt and uncle playing. The paper was yellowing and old, and we found some beautiful drawings that my aunt, these wouldn't have been called drawings, I guess. These were just her doodles. And it was just so special. And thankfully, Carson and Cadence were there with me. And so this one made me laugh because obviously my uncle was taking a long time for her to have enough time to draw this sweet little turtle. <laughs> anyway, we pulled out the letters for Love Came Down and I'm gonna use three of the holders, put two of them together and then one on top in the back and spell out Love Came Down. Again, I'm not gonna glue anything down because we're gonna be using this to play with after Christmas. <laughs> and here it is all finished and I am just so in love with this and the simplicity, the subtlety of it. I'm glad Bryn, you sent me the picture and I think I did a pretty good job. It's not exactly like the original piece, but then what painting is. <laughs> so we have a little bit of our own sparrow love on it. I love how this came out and I hope you like it too. And then originally, instead of using the Scrabble game, I had decided to use this little glass container from the Dollar Tree that kind of resembles, I guess, like a milk jug. And so I painted that white, but the reason I wanted to make a little arrangement next to it was because I wanted to use these little blue pom-poms. I'll show you that in, a, in just a second. So I didn't want to take the cutting machine out for such a small project, and I wanted to be sure that you all could do this too. So I'm just going to use the transfer method by taking my blue chalk and rubbing it all along the back side of my printed out piece and I just designed this on my silhouette suite and then printed it out on my copy machine and then I'm going to take it and lay it onto the surface and tape it down on one side with my painters tape and then using a pencil that's not really super sharp but pretty sharp I'm going to go over all of those letters so I can see where to go back in with my gold paint pen. And then just to give it some more cuteness and to coordinate with my sign, I'm gonna take that same gold ribbon and make a sweet little bow around the neck of my jar. Now I'm gonna add my Christmas greenery and I'm using some of these white poinsettias and then here's those little pom-pom balls that I love so much and they matched with Mary's veil. So I wanted to include that as well. Now the only reason I made the Scrabble one was because I felt like this one was too close to the same height as my house, but it's still super pretty and I think it can stand alone by itself on another shelf, but I love it and I hope you like it too.
For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm using three of the Flower Market Tall Skinny Pails, and then I wasn't sure which rope I was gonna use and some other things I'll show you in a second. So I took my acetone, and be careful of your fingernail polish, try not to get it on that, and I'm just gonna take off the words. I wasn't sure if they were gonna show through or not, but I also found that if you keep going, you can get down to that galvanized metal and the letters will stay white. You can also scrape them off if you don't want them. Anyway, I'm gonna use three napkin holders and some balls from the Dollar Tree that's with the greenery. And I'm taking my French linen, some hazelnut, and some antique wax, and I'm just gonna start daubing that or dabbing that, whatever you wanna call it, onto my pot and give it kind of a weathered look. Now I'm gonna go back and all three of these are gonna be a little bit different in shading, but I want it all splotchy and messed up. And I really wanted to showcase the seams of my buckets because we're gonna be turning these over and making them into bells. So I'm gonna be sure to do the tops, which are actually the bottoms of my buckets and get all of the nooks and crannies in there if any of the tin or the white shows it's actually okay because it can peek through and still be pretty because it's weathered looking and then around the rims i'm going to get a little bit darker and like i said on those seams and then the good thing about these buckets is that the black of the rim is already dark so i was able to leave the insides white and you could still see some of that weathered look from the pill as it was so then i'm going to do the same effect with my napkin rings and then my little balls and then I'm using my big fat nail again to punch a hole right in the middle and then I decided to use the brown rope and I'm going to feed that into the top of that hole. Well the top of the bell which is the bottom of the pot. <laughs> oh it's so confusing. Anyway I'm going to shove that in there and then I'm going to take my big fat nail again and make a big hole into my styrofoam ball and shove the rope into that hole. I did go back and glue this but it's pretty secure just when you shove it in there. So anyway, then I decided how long I wanted to make the little ding-donger and held my finger on the rope on the inside and then made a big knot so that it wouldn't go back through the hole. Now, instead of making a hole, you could just attach your napkin ring to the top with some hot glue and maybe some E6000 so that it stays in place and then just wrap your rope around that. But I decided to do it this way and I'm gonna glue that knot to the top of my bell, which is the bottom of the tin. Oh dear. Anyway, and then I'm gonna take that top piece and I'm gonna cut that off and kind of fan it out so that the rope is flat on the top of my bell. And then I'm gonna glue my napkin holder to the top of that. And I don't know if you can see it, but I accidentally scuffied up the top of my paint job when I cut the rope off with my scissors. So I'm gonna keep my used brushes in a plastic baggie until I'm completely done with the project so that in case something like this happens, I can go back and just touch it up. Then I'm gonna take my rope and attach it to the napkin holder. And I want these to be staggered in how they hang. So I'm gonna do different lengths for each of my bells. So once I got them to the desired length, then I'm gonna take them and take a piece of jute twine and wrap that around the top so that they stay secure and I'll just tie a knot on that. And then I'm gonna add a perky bow and I'm using some Hobby Lobby ribbon that I got last year and this is what we did our Christmas trees in, the red and white, for those of you that don't know, red is my mom's favorite color and so in honor of her, we are making this Christmas as special as possible because she does have cancer. She just got done with chemotherapy and so we're waiting for her to be completely restored and healed along with her short-term memory loss. So keep praying you guys because it is working. So now I'm just gonna take a Christmas greenery from the Dollar Tree and pull those apart. Don't do this the way I did it because I didn't notice until later on when I washed my hands, I had cut myself with the wire as I was pulling those apart. So do as I say, not as I do. 
<laughs> and then I'm just gonna attach those to the top of my rope with a zip tie. And then I'm gonna go back and make my perky bow. So I'm just gonna wrap that around a couple of times and then cut little slits in the middle, use a chenille stem to attach it, making sure that it goes into those little slits. And then I'm gonna dovetail the edges and it's all fluffed out. I made one big long loop at the bottom when I attached it so that I could cut that and make tails. And I want those uneven so I kind of cut it off center. And then with the extra chenille stem, I'm gonna wrap that around where my zip tie and my jute twine is and cover all of the ickies up. And here it is all finished and I am in love with these. I think they are so pretty and rustic looking. I love the off-white colors and how weathered and pretty they look. This is perfect for one of those walls that are skinny and you have nothing to put there. <laughs> so I love it and I hope you like it too. I hope you enjoyed all of these projects and if you did, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think, even share this video if you want to. <laughs> Remember the reason for the season. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye!